There is no wrong or right. I mean, when I grew up in my house, we were very judgmental. We, there was a certain conduct code that we had to follow, a regimen of way to be, way to act. And we had a great pride that we were First Virginia family. Um, granddaddy didn't talk too bad about the black people. Grandmommy would say stuff like, oh, they get my hair in my brush. And Granddaddy said that the brains weren't as smart. And that's about all he said. And then Nana would go on and on about the monkeys and how they look like monkeys. And they're from Africa and they're from monkeys. And the white people came in on a... I, I didn't... I mean, it's kind of like, it's like a bully, you know, you feel better about yourself. Um, and, you know, I mean, I mean, she grew up in a different time period. Uh, I'm sorry to say she never got over her racism, um, really. And it's taken me, because I didn't grow up in a neighborhood with a lot of black people, um, to see their beauty. I mean, I've never really dated or been attracted. There's very few people I'm attracted to anyway, but... I would, I would date one if I was, I, I saw a real cute African-American, uh, American, white, black and white couple arguing. It was so cute, the two of them. And um, I, I feel very proud that I can connect and talk to them without being judgmental. Sometimes most, a lot of black people I meet, and I meet the upper middle class black people that are just as hateful to the poor blacks is the upper middle class white people. It's so disgusting. But, um, yeah, they're just people, you know, they got issues. Um, sometimes it's really hard to climb out of a, a deep crater um, when you can't see what's on the outside. So some people that have grown up so poor for so long, they really don't know what to work for. So they work for the gold chains and the fancy cars, and, and, and they're kind of learning um but they need good role models. And so we got to step in and the, the people that are healthy. And that's where I come to with my first Virginia family is that the bipolar ran in my grandma's family. She ended up taking some medicine. And then obviously the bipolar too was in my granddad's family. And then my mom was on Wellbutrin for stress and anxiety. And um, when I had my first bipolar break, which they say that mental illness can be worsened by a stressful childhood. And you would think that, um, I mean, my mom did hit me a lot. I, w I was, I was, I'm an artist. I was outside the box and I didn't follow the protocol. I didn't want to sit at the table and do the puzzles. I said, we've already got the picture. Why don't we sit here and do, let's go do something. I was always sneaking out and having fun and getting caught. And I drove my mom crazy because she was pretty controlling. And Jennifer was, you know, pretty in the box. And then I think Chip went to live with my dad. Um, my dad suffered a bipolar two condition, you know, definitely angry a lot. And he didn't physically harm us, but it was stressful. He'd come home and he'd be so angry that he would slam things. You could just feel it. And mom, the tension in the air and mom not liking that behavior and him because of his bipolar, not able to be warm and consoling of her week. I mean, she's been trying to take care of three kids or I was at grandmommy's and then I'd come home and I'd be like, I didn't get grandmommy and I got along fine. And then granddaddy and I got along fine and HV and I got along fine. And my dad and I, why, why can't I get along with you, mom? And dad would like specially love on me. And I was, I guess his favorite child. And I think that was for good reason because it would make mom jealous. It was kind of a passive aggressive way of saying, you know, Linda's unhealthy. She obviously has lots of problems. She's smoking cigarettes and drinking and then trying to make everything spit and shine like Jennifer. It's like, oh, everything's perfect. And if it looks perfect, it must be perfect. And never really digging deep into any kind of psychological truth. And I was fortunate all these years, I guess. In high school, I was suffering depression, so um, I rode the, the bus. I would ride the bus, and I'd go see a counselor, and I skipped school. I was I was bulimic, which is related to depression, um, and I got help. You know, I, I went to the hospital. It wasn't just me. It was the whole family unit 
that was unhealthy. Um, and whether or not they can survive it, a lot of people do. A lot of people survive a lot of psychiatric problems without seeking help. Like Jerry, you know, whatever his problems were, probably depression and stuff, he'd drink. And a lot of people do that with psychiatric illness. They do drugs or, you know, like money can kind of suffice for a little bit. Like you, I know, you know, when I was married to Jerry, we never had enough money for what we wanted to do. And I'm like, oh, my God, we had 100000 a year some years. And so it's funny how when you have a psychiatric illness that no money, you can have more and more and more. But the upper middle class has got an illness. They've got a psychiatric illness because, you know, I meet kind of hard working people that, um, you know, they may have a hobby or something like that. You know, they make a reasonably good and they're happier. They're just happier. These upper middle class people not having a real experience. It's, it's kind of a falsity of money and the prestige that it brings and the big houses. And, you know, you can dress up and paint up and all that kind of stuff, but you'll never be Queen Elizabeth. You know, come on, wake up. This is America. We're a melting pot. Um, but psychiatric illness is the behavior. You know, when, when you have a heart attack, you kind of fall down and you're numb. Psychiatric is the same way. It's just different. Your body does different things when the chemicals are off in your brain. And you just have to separate the person you love from the unhealthy behaviors that are created from a psychiatric chemical imbalance. I mean, if your brain is, if the chemicals are speeding up, so to speak, we all get that. Some days your sun's shining, you feel good. And some days you're kind of down, you're kind of low. But with a bipolar or depressive illness, everything's negative. And my dad struggled with that all of his life, just the negativity of the depression that he felt. And that's normal for a bipolar too, to have that negativity. Um, you know, and then he just, he goes batshit crazy on certain subjects. Um, I think he's smart enough. I, I think his IQ is smart enough. He could have been a politician, but he couldn't control his emotions. And that's not a character flaw. When it's a, when it's an actual chemical imbalance in your brain that needs medication and you look at the history, you look at sister killing herself, you look at your grandmommy and her problems with bipolar. Um, you look at Linda, um, and everybody seems to want to point the finger at me as the villain, but I'm the one that's the savior. I'm the one that lets y'all at least open up a little bit because the thing is in our society today is still there's discrimination against brain chemical illness. There, it's, it's like being a nigger, you know, oh, you're a nigger. And, and that's just hurtful. You know, that's a hurtful term for a human, a human that has suffered many, many years, probably maybe the children, you know, the great, great grandmothers that they sold the children. They love their kids. I don't care whether they can read and write. We didn't teach them that. We taught them how to work the fields. You know, they came here from Africa. I imagine they the black people ran Monticello. I think Thomas was gone. He was gone being president. It was always a treat. He'd be like, I get to go home. But uh, he'd go to Paris. He didn't run Monticello. That that plantation was run by the slaves. It just was. So they knew everything to do, and they did it while he was gone. So they ran Monticello, the business of Monticello getting. And there was no marketing tools, really. It wasn't sold on the Internet. So Thomas couldn't make a lot of money. This was the grounds and the food that they grew were to feed the people that lived there. So this wasn't a money-making endeavor. He was no businessman. He was a statesman. And um, I would compare Ralph Northern character to him. I think they're both very nice people. Ralph is calm, cool. He doesn't get upset. Not like Frank um, or HV and just jumping off the handle. And the thing is, is that if you don't understand that's a chemical imbalance in your brain, then, then it's a character flaw. Just like the persecution of me through Oh my God, so many hospital stays and, and doctors not knowing the right medications and having so many choices and trying different things and trying to commit suicide, feeling so bad 
for a while, for days and days and months on end, that I tried to kill my. And I was, if I'd had a gun, it would have been, it would have been a done deal. Um, so this is good that I lived through it, and I might be able to do something productive from it. I am not lying to y'all. I will tell you, I don't think Jennifer suffers as much chemical imbalance as Frank or HV, really. But I do think she's under a lot of stress to present a perfect front that everything's okay and happy. And rather than expose herself for whatever bothers her, she's very passive aggressive and she will needle someone by doing something behind their back. And that's a Jerry Minogue tactic too. It's, it's not unusual. It's a passive aggressive when you don't want to have confrontation because you don't know how to set boundaries or stick with them or feel good or may ha have an actual real conversation with somebody about the, the feelings. Um, we grew up in a family that we weren't allowed to feel certain things because we didn't know how to deal with it because there was mental illness. Dad did not have appropriate measure of feeling. He didn't have feeling for my mom. He couldn't help her. You know, like, oh, Linda, I'm so sorry you're having a panic attack. Please, please let me cuddle up to you and help you. He couldn't do that. He he was dismayed. He was like, she's not meeting my sexual needs. She's not the mother I want. And and Grandmommy was warm and loving. And, and Mom was struggling with the adult child of an alcoholic syndrome. This is complicated. You guys want to make it so easy, like, because you have money and you can present well that it's okay, but that's not that's not real. That's not real. Money's not real at all. Money can can subdue it somewhat, but the cancer still grows, and the cancer of stress is growing in Jennifer and her arthritis. I don't know about Chip. I mean, he get, that's there's a good reason he's far away from being caught in the Joyce and Frank. And no, you know. I saw that happen and it really bothered me. And then as I got older and I understood granddaddy, granddaddy knew dad was mentally ill. He just never, there was never really any help for it at that time. There was no Wellbutrin. There was no uh, psychiatric medication in the 1970s and 80s to help dad. And granddaddy knew that. It was just starting to come out. And um, so those choices of dad, to destroy what my mom wanted fake it was fake we were not a happy family but but fakely mom wanted to present a united front and she wanted so much to have a happy family now granny's family wasn't happy either you know but she had four kids and i think willis had an affair on her so he's he granny was tough you know she wasn't that sexy um and she wasn't warm. And, and mom wanted to be, you know, she just didn't grow up that way. She didn't have grandmommy to love on her, to, to know how to be that way. And, um, you know, mom was a, a good, she had a person of integrity, and she tried really hard to do well with the considerable amount of psychiatric illness that she had, that she was on Wellbutrin for. I kind of got to be the scapegoat because I was like, oh, let's all point the finger at her. And apparently it's my failing that I got sick. Like, oh God, what has she done now? But that's not the way it happens. The way it happens is stress um, causes, like when I was in college, I kept dropping out of classes because I was delusional and I would have to retake the class and I just could never get it together. And it was stressful. I mean, I had a daughter and then I got married to Jerry and a lot of stress was relieved in the beginning. i I had money. I didn't have to worry about school. I just got to have kids. And then the stress of his alcoholism kind of hit. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to be with him. I don't want to touch him. I don't want to sleep in the same bed with him. I don't want him to touch me. And I don't want to be a prostitute. So how do we do this? And then I finally, even after counseling, got out of it. And I went back to see Kent. And I didn't know he'd like me. But when I saw him when I was 40, I realized that, wow. Huh, the crush I had, he did like me back. And people thought I was, well, it was a it's just local small talk because I'd had a breakdown um, when he told me he had leukemia. It was crazy. Made me a little crazy about him dying. But I have, I have no problem with dad's bipolar. I feel for him. I think he suffered. I think he suffered all those years. He tried to make a living, and it was so tough 
with having emotions that are all over the board and the negativity of depression could just coming in, perforating everything, depression and negativity over and over and over. And he's a, he was raised as an upper class gentleman. And I felt like I was raised kind of upper class since I spent a lot of time with granddaddy. Um, and granddaddy's mom was upper class in Birmingham. They were a member of the country club. Um, so we sort of sense that there was not the money situation was not conducive of actually having a quality life. I mean, you had to have a certain amount, but grandma I and mean, granddad had great love and great acceptance of certain situations that just weren't going to be changed. And they still loved each other. You know, grandmommy would have loved to have traveled and granddaddy didn't. That's tough in a marriage, you know. And I guess she's not at the day and age when she would just go out with a friend like Phyllis or somebody like that, Buckner, and, and go on a trip. Um, so she was limited. Um, I don't know what money they had or didn't have, but grandmommy did fun. You know, she did a lot of fun stuff. And that's when granddaddy would tell her not to spend the money. And, buy, you know, she had bipolar, man. She'd go out and spend money. And, um... So you think I'm bad on spending money. I mean, Grandmommy earned her own money as a nurse, but she spent it frivolously. You know, Granddaddy wasn't approving of that. But then he'd see her look real sharp in a, in a really beautiful dress or suit she bought. And, you know, I remember one Thanksgiving, I guess Grandmommy didn't want to cook dinner because she wasn't really into that. Not like Nana. She did it, but it wasn't her favorite thing. And um, so he took everybody out for Thanksgiving so Grandmommy wouldn't have to cook dinner, which I thought was real cool. But yeah, no, mental illness definitely runs in the family. And um, to try to hide from it or, you know, gloss, nobody would suspect you have mental illness, Jennifer, except me. And I know the way you treat me is unkind. And I think it's from stress. And you never delve in. You went to a counseling session, but you just wanted to run the whole meeting. It was all about you. And then I guess my social security, you wanted to control that too. And so you came in and you realized what I was telling you was the truth. And and, and, and you want to negate any diplomacy between you and I because you are right. You have, you do have the most money and it's incredible. I, I don't understand how John can afford everything you have, but it's neither here nor there because I have a good life. Um, and I will say that when you take my children, that was unexpected and it was terrible. And it was like stabbing me in the back, like for whatever reason that you have to dislike me so much that you would screw around and passive aggressively hurt me in such a way that was devastating. It was devastating on Christmas and Thanksgiving. Do you think I'm not a person? Do you think I'm an animal that you can just, you think I'm a slave? You think I'm a nigger because you're racist? I'm not. And neither are they. They're not, they're not animals. They're not people you can just slap around and pretend that their, their feelings are less important than yours. And it's a very immature baby thing to do is to not, if you're really scared that I'm so sick, I'd probably be in the hospital. But even if I wasn't a grown up, psychologically sound approach, would you give me a call and talk for a few minutes? Um, you know, mom, I know, you know, she was somewhat controlling it and stuff like that. But, you know, she would also talk to me. She'd call and talk. And Hillary is under the impression that only mom could love me that way because of the representation of the family that you are, that Hillary is so young and she wants to appear successful too. And she's so funny because she is nothing like you. And um, the, the amount of success monetarily, tell us the truth. How's your and John's wedding? How's, how's the marriage? How's the sex? Uh, is everything really cool? Are you are you discussing it? Or are you just really... I mean, I could look at Granddaddy and Grandmommy's marriage, and I knew what was wrong, because they were real. They were real. Grandma would get mad. She'd stomp her foot, and she'd give Granddaddy the middle finger. If she cooked dinner, and Granddaddy's disinterested in the den, looking at a magazine or a newspaper, she looked at him, and she stuck her middle finger out, and she called him into the kitchen. She said, I've cooked... Now you come in here and you eat this dinner. I like the realness of that. And you just seem very fake. And 
to go behind my back. I mean, if you're going to attack me straight on, say, I can't stand being around you. You're crazy. You drive me nuts. Goodbye. And you can't come to Christmas. I like that.